after. But we are just about to start the match. Very excited about it. And here we go. This is the World Star Battle Tournament 2. I am Artemis, and with me is Bozo Cat. We are cast in the semifinal game of the Lions versus Team 21-0. 21-Z. And we're now in game 2. The Lions took game 1, and 21-Z has definitely want to prove their mettle so then they can represent you, which is just coincidence, represent you in fighting in the Grand Finals against an NA team as of yet undetermined. So starting off in the top, we have Rebellions again as a 5-armor Destro. Two Guardians, Gur and Damn Good, both 5-spine, Raven Rookie, and Admin 6, and Stifler again on Leviathans, and they did a good job last time. Coming from the bottom, we have Team 21Z. Team 21Z coming out with 5-armor Destro Raven Creek. Rump is again doing an Overlord. We have Nightstar, and this time on an Arbiter instead of a Carrier with Storm, Loco, Moving from Destro to Leviathan with Constitution and Evil Source again as Leviathan. So a little bit of a switch around in the rosters on the Team 21 side. And this is going to be a bit of a different feel for the game, no carriers this time. Oh, Seeker. See, I always miss this. Usually, almost 9 times out of 10, you get an EMP off a of Raven, but then you get Seeker, which actually, I've seen it been used, and it's good for donation. And Guys, let's make Obozo Cat ten dollars poor. I like Bozo Cat, but Doctors Without Borders could use ten dollars. Yeah, I like Doctors Without Borders more than I like me. <laughs> so come on, rookie, if you can hear me, which you shouldn't be able to, if you can hear me right now, make a kill, make it happen, man. I almost want to type Doctor. Cat. It's amazing how much more push power that Seeker Raven has in comparison to the Emp Raven. The only thing is they don't now have they don't have a way to stop the storms or a plague, but last time they didn't either. So rookie can always the go back and get easy. Red is excellent. They do not stack up when they don't need to. Mm -hmm. And we noticed that last game as well. This team has gone all the way to the grand finals and won multiple times over. The rosters changed, but the core of the team is still the same. The Guardians, basically we have Guardian, you know, two Leviathans Duke gain it up at the top. Basically the same right now. Eight eight range on both, about two, three bio on each. Very even. Lions have a bit more of an advantage in a farm score, but we'll see how that settles out after maybe after five minutes. Admin six and Loco still relatively even, but Leviathans for Lions are pulling ahead a bit. Yes, it's really too even to say. And this is where we see the double Leviathan in the metagame. It's just very good. Oh, really? Oh, do you mean bile number? Uh, it's six bile upgrades versus only three. Uh, and also six bile count wow. versus five. So, yeah, so, so Loco has two. superior DPS at the moment. I'm not sure where he's getting the money for that. No speed, uh, just one range upgrade. He's he's up. It looks like a good twenty farm over him. Good job. Even though his team has been contained, uh, that may be just a, an imbalance in the randomness of the farm, or it may be that anyone's is doing a better job of making space for him. Or a little bit of both. It's sort of it's part of its luck, and part of it's also just taking advantage of what you have. So, so rum is. Already have help of regening. Thank heaven, sir. Can regenerate. Rebellions will be able to be a bit more, even though they don't have two Destros, Rebellions could be a bit more aggressive because he has shield transfer from Rookie, and there's no danger of, there's no real danger of launching on Rookie. There's no carriers this time, so he'll be able to keep pushing. Rookie's, you know, notice is going all the way down to no shields. And that's to make Rebellions look scarier. That's it's a psychological thing. Yeah. Ravens can transfer at 140 shields per second by default, and so, you know, even if he were floating 2,000 shields, if it came to an emergency, he could unload that on Rebellions pretty quickly. So the only reason he's he's keeping it in Rebellions rather than in himself is just to make Rebellions more intimidating. Yeah. And then also, of course, keeping Rebellions is hull up. That in itself is intimidating. And it also means Rebellions can stay out longer, because as long as he can regen shields, it's good. And there you go, popping a 
he's going to be popping a seeker missile. Boom, a bunch of damage. It's really about intimidation at this level. It's like any other 20, 2100 damage per seeker, by the way. That's pretty good. Now, Admin 6 is now dancing with Rum at the bottom. Where the other Leviathan go? Loco's going back for rapid regen. But Admin 6 actually is getting really hurt by these plagues. Not much he can do. He can't really do anything against it besides from buying health upgrades, which at this point he's not going to do. Stifler is being gang ganged up on the top by Shanks, an evil source. Gurr is sort of hanging around using the broodlings. Yeah, and that's huge for a Zerg ship. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Rumper's getting put down a bit. Acid. Loco warps in. Good timing by Loco's warp in. Excellent save. Yep. An upgraded fully fully um, recharged Leviathan with rapid regen. Definitely too scary. Definitely too scary to mess with. You don't want to try to push at this point. It's too early in the game to say. And Rebellion's going back. And look, you got Rookie all full on shields. He's going to pump Rebellion's full up of shields. And... There you go, he can actually turn out and go again if he wants, or he can upgrade and get his bots, and it looks like they're going to do it. Yeah, he need, he can't fight it in rapid regen. 21's doing a much better job of creating threat this game, so that they can get some farm. Mm -hmm. Last time, basically, any time Rebellions, there were the two Destros, and any time Rebellions have come close, people just sort of back off. And maybe it's the fact it's a Destroyer, or it's Rebellions, but yeah, it was that, pass it was that passivity that really was hurting them. It was also fear of getting your lasers aggroed for a big launch. That too. The threat of launches, the threat of the Destros running you down, and adds up. And I just want to say to the stream, we are now at 148% of our donation goal. You guys are awesome. Since the game started, someone, we got uh, more big donations. Which is really amazing. So guys, justgiving.com slash swarm of hearts. Doctors Without Borders is really an awesome organization, and it's definitely worthy of our support. And actually, speaking of Doctors Without Borders, the winning team of uh, Star Strikers was called Pants Without Borders, which I think is uh, pretty funny. So everyone's sort of spread out around here. We've got the basic sort of bunch of, we have the Guardian and the, and the Leviathan at the bottom, and a bit of a bunching up at the top with the Destro. Not really in the regular farming lanes as they push back, but it's not even a pushback. 21 is falling back for upgrades. They're all sitting on 400, 500 minerals, and Evil Source is running away from Seeker Missile. Now already, the Lions are pulling back. Yep, because they don't want, they're worried about this warp, so they can see Loco. I think Loco should have peeled off for his warp trick a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. just to, to keep the lions off their base for that much longer. Yeah, they only pushed him back to half, basically. The lions have a very powerful mid game right now with the double corrosive, uh, but uh, it's it's still not quite big enough an advantage that they can be fearless of a warp trick yet. Yeah, but the double, cor double corrosive and the guardians just more energy and lasers and shields on the Arbiter and more energy on the Overlord and Cross of Acid on Shanks actually Cross of Acid everywhere now all the Leviathans except for Admin 6 actually the Lions, the Lions Leviathans don't have Rapid Regen yet, which I think we saw last game as well That's interesting, because Admin 6 did go back to upgrade, and he instead bought some other things. Bid push here. Guardian Shanks has gotten caught in a bit of a bad position. He's being targeted by the two Guardians. Double Corrosed Acid. Loco's coming in. He's going to be able to tank a bit. But he, but Shanks does have a secret on him. So he's got to run away. And he just... Game closed. And he just stopped and managed to take a hit. But he still has 2,000... He still has 2,000 health, so... We'll be okay. Hey, did you know, Bozo, when you're paused, you can scroll around the screen? That's nice. That's not the case for the players. Ah. So I will continue typing out upgrades. That's that's something new. But you can't... Oh, you can even click on them. That's awesome. I'm liking Heart of the Swarm.
thanks for the upgrade updates, Bozo. Always appreciated. Having read off the upgrades, I noticed that uh, there's no rapid vision on the rebellion's side for the leviathans, yeah, and so too. and yeah. there's also no money banked for getting it on this back. They um, had more than enough last back. They consciously made the decision not to, which I find interesting. Loco and Evil Source can take advantage of this and push them around a little bit. Yep. They can't push too hard, or those two guardians will collapse on them and double cross at them, which will hurt. But they can they can definitely exert a little bit of pressure, and they should try mm -hmm. to do so while they have that transient advantage. Yep, because the little because the lions, leviathans, they actually put they put their minerals into more damage. But yeah, for sure. They Evil source in particular should be playing aggressively because admin six has superior range, and so his only advantage over admin six right now is that rapid regen. And also the fact that he has that admin six only has half health. But there's Rebellions warping in, which shows, yes, you have to be careful. Rebby's only 1.5, though. Yep. And then now we've got the two Guardians for the Lions pulling back to upgrade. 21 is also pulling back a bit to regroup. But they don't have enough minerals to warrant going back to upgrade, so... Well, except maybe the Arbiter, but they need to figure out what's their game plan next. So Loco's starting to do damage to Stifler, and you can see the difference here. Stifler's in the orange, Loco's only in the yellow, and he just used his rapid regen. So he's doing all right, but now the Guardians have us are using Scourge, double Scourge against Loco, which basically negates the rapid regen advantage. Nice timing Stif with the launch by Stifler, too, for aggroing the tents. No anabolic for either of them. Uh, so once again, we see the EU style, where they want to play it safe and keep their health high. Some people from the watching the stream were uh, <laughs> like that comment about anabolic and EU players. I would love to see some guardian versus guardian action to see the two different styles fighting against each other when we get to the finals. So that would be awesome. Yeah. Well, that's what the TSL finals ended up being, right? Uh, I did not actually get to watch them, so I can't comment on it. Did I commentate those? <laughs> Did I do the casting for the finals? I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> I really should remember, but it was such a long time ago. It was It's a long gap between Star Battle events. Usually we have it one sure about is. once a month. This is a nice break during which I play World of Tanks. <gasps> Action's getting a little more intense now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the both teams are playing a little bit more aggressively, and 21 doesn't have anything to lose. They've got to win this in order to survive and just get a game three. Stifler's now in now with rapid regen, so that initial advantage is gone. And so Stifler also has more health. To 400 and unupgraded regen to 2160 on the regen, yeah. so Loco still has that transient advantage. Yep, and Admin 6. Admin 6 still doesn't have rapid regen, but it looks like he's maybe saving up for it. Loco's moving to the center. It's a double scourge. Nightstar is going to be busy with storming those scourges. Rookie got hit by a plague. I think we're going to see Psyblast from... No, maybe Psyblast. I don't want to ping lest I ruin it, but Evil Source is on the top lane, so... Got it. Whip trick. Yep. That was very well played by 21C. Now the only problem is this is dangerous because they're down farm. It's, I guess it's good if uh, the, if the casters know so I have a notoriously hard time sometimes spotting warp tricks. I'm like, oh, this is happening. Here we go. Oh, but Evil Source was only 1.6. The lions are going to slip clean away. That's so sad. And Rebellion's just like, I have 11 armor. I will fight you all myself. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Come at me. Come at thee. And so he, he chases them around and tanks for the Scourge. 
Now, something of intelligent, actually, Rum just tossed a plague on top of Admin 6, which pays off because if it turns out that the lions want to turn, Admin 6 is just that much lower in health, and he doesn't have rapid regen. I would actually prefer to see uh, that plague saved for any potential turn so that he can just plague the ball and get out of there. True. It'd be, it'd be more total damage. It was sort of a pre the, sort of preemptive. The fear of a plague is nastier than an actual plague. Fear of attacks, fear of a plague. Yeah. Fear of mines. Mines, oh, they mess with you. They mess with your head. We've got Stifler switching onto Loco. Yep. But a storm dissuades him. And it, Nightstar has Chrono Boost. With an unupgraded Chrono Boost, and he was using it a little bit on Loco. He's basically able to put on anyone who needs energy regen. Uh, Rookie now is being siphoned, so that means that the Overlord has siphoned. We're starting to get to the part of the game where the uh, the powerful mid-game stuff on the Guardians is starting to be outweighed by the powerful mid-game stuff on the uh, support ships, yeah. and so we're seeing uh, the Rebels sort of take up a lot more yeah. uh, cautious approach. And Rebellion's going to swing out soon out. because the the window's closing. Yeah, and let's take a good chance to take a look at the farm. We're still six six. Just above 2,000 farm for Team 21, and the Lions have 2,160 farm. So, only basically 100 farm lead at this point. This is definitely a lot more even than last game. But again, that's what you expect in semifinals of a World Star Battle Tournament. Good play on both sides and different styles. I'm, I'm curious what's happening over in the 7th Fleet uh, Cyberdyne side of things. I know. So curious. No, but we'll find out later. We'll watch the stream. We'll get the reports. Gurd doing a little bit of a follow-up scourge. And Rookie's still Seekering, which is, makes sense. The burst damage. He now has Seeker, EMP, and Point Defense drones. He is a, a walking arsenal, and he has 475 energy, which is basically enough to support all of those things. Yep. Much better than last time. And only four lasers at this point. But much better than the last time, able to basically... He's got enough tools in his pocket, he can do what he needs to do. Shield transferring to Rebellions, who's getting aggroed. Evil Rebellion Source Frenzied. A lot of damage from Evil Source's Frenzy. Yep. That PDD should There goes Rebellions. Sooner. This 21 may be trying to push and get Rebellions. Corrosive Acid on Evil Source had to pull out. 600. But th there's a shield transfer. Which... He has an acid spray on him. He's burning. Has. No, P600. spray does not interrupt bots. Oh, that's interesting. We learn something new every day. Undocumented game mechanics thread. We might have to put that in there. <laughs> the thread is really awesome, Bozo. If uh, people don't know, there's a thread that Bozo opened on the PlayStarBattle.com forums, and it has a lot of interesting undocumented game mechanics, such as this. Ones that sometimes don't make sense and could almost be considered bugs, or others that are just details of implementations of abilities. Oh, sorry about that. Eee, sorry. I alt tabbed in and, and the alt key made my ping happen. Should I say sorry to everybody? Yeah. Uh, no. Nah. Anyways. We don't want oh, to here we go. Whoa, up really at the top. Admin 6, did he get... Frenzy's on Admin 6. And Admin 6... Back out, he's taking critical damage. Admin 100, 900, 700. Oh, there's a scourge coming in, it gets acid sprayed. And he has chrono boost on him. Notably, Admin 6 dies because he did not have rapid regen. <sighs> Little kitties and kitties and puppies, remember, rapid regen can save you. <laughs> what, what killed him? He was burning. He burned down. Wow, I didn't realize he'd gotten that low. He was in, he was around 600, and then I, st and I was just thinking he doesn't have rapid regen, but I wasn't sure how. If you could get back. Well, you can't burn down from 600. There, it was si there may have been something. Uh, he was plagued, I think. Oh, plague will do it. Okay. Uh, 600, 600 plus plague will definitely could do that. Okay, yep. Thank you, Rumper. That will be another donation to Doctors Without Borders. Woohoo! And I think actually, who got the credit for that? It was Rum that got it, I think. Yep. Okay, so let's take a look at the farm count, guys. Good time to do it. 6-5 now, advantage for Team 21. Moral of the story, guys, rapid regen. Um, 2,400 farm for 21. <laughs> and 
2140 farm for um, the lion. So only a 300 farm gap here, but they did lose admin 6. One of the two leviathans, so now they're sh down a leviathan, which later game can definitely hurt, and admin 6 was quite bossy. And he had frenzy. Stifler does not. Fourth fields for Nightstar. Things are now solidly in favor of 21z. Yep. Rookie's been using his PDDs, but he's got his hands full. And also Nightstar is now using the Corona Boost. Got bought an up one upgrade for Corona Boost for the duration. Loco now has Frenzy, Acid Spray, Rapid Regen, all the tools he needs, and ten by seven tents. We'll need to catch up with the He's now at less he's now at three shots. Well he's not at to one shot. Mm-hmm, that's a yeah, that's a good observation, Bozo. The two guard the two guardians they are now Gur is going back, she's sitting on five hundred. But the guardians oh, Gur got anabolic. But Gur's only got five spines, four it's like very weak guardians overall. All they've got right now is their are their abilities. Uh there's a parasite out on the overlord, which makes sense for the plagues. Parasite is particularly devastating on an Oversword because of the passive that gives it extra sight range. The Parasite also benefits from that sight range, and so you can see the whole enemy team with one Parasite. Too bad we can't tell if, if um, there's some passive you don't know if a person's bot or not, because it won't be displayed. That's true. Would be nice actually to have like a little, like a buff icon. I know it's not quite a buff, but it would be good, because then you could... Um, for the passive? Yeah, yeah. part of the Swarm single player campaign does use little icons for just passive abilities like that. I think I'm going to suggest in the beta. Go for it. And we now have Broodlords out from Gur. Damn good can afford them. Energy. Yep. So that is the Lion's late game solution. The question is, is that will they have time to buy into that solution if they're going double Broodlords? Ah. Metabolic? I think it's called. It is. Loco getting Chrono boosted so he's able to ha hold up against Stifler. Because he doesn't quite have the same amount of bile. Mm, especially oh you mean less energy than three seventy five on Gur? Because yes, she has anabolic. Because anabolic provides so much energy regeneration, getting more energy upgrades is kind of overkill. Whereas uh the damage on your buildings multiplies by that effective 25 virtual energy upgrades that you have. Mm -hmm. So it's generally better to have uh, more upgrades in your Broodling Strike than in energy. Gur actually has uh, seven energy... Is that right? Uh, yeah, seven energy upgrades and eight Broodling Strike. I'd, I'd like to see it more like six and nine or even five and ten. Mm -hmm. Now Shanks hasn't gone back yet. He, he's sitting on over 700 minerals, so we'll see what direction that Guardian is going to go. Five green strike. Whether or not he go, he's going to go broodlords, we'll see. Last time we actually didn't see that they invested in broodlords, but they ended up never going that far. But it wasn't really necessary. The battle of the P the forest of PDDs versus the oasis of force fields, or something. I'll have to come up with a good phrase. I think oasis is pretty good. They do c look kind of liquid. Mm -hmm. It makes it, it makes it sort of it's sort of like a calm look. You know, they just flicker like that. So Loco frenzying up, Stifler counter frenzying. Now one thing notice folks, we haven't seen any BCs. Haven't seen any BCs in the quarterfinals or beyond, I think. Did see the two BCs, but I believe that was in this round of sixteen. BCs just do not have a place in high level play. The basic problem for battle cruisers is there's only one thing they can do that a guardian can't do. Um, a guardian can do kiting, a guardian can do uh, anti-interceptor duty, and a guardian can do field visibility with parasite. The only thing a BC can do other than that is ability denial, and right now the meta doesn't favor ability denial. Yeah, especially because lockdown got so nerfed. Expensive. Yeah. Yep, so I'd love to see that my beloved BC get back into the game, but... As would I. For now, not it's not to be. Reviewable source going around again for another warp trick. Yep. Notice he's using a patch of allied creeps to spot enemy creeps so that he does not get spotted. 
that. And there's no vision yet. Notice there's no vision yet. Lines do not know he's here. The team's pulling back. Now they know they're there. I saw it blip up for a sec. But Z has the option of warping onto Loco and catching farm instead if they want. Yeah. Bit flexible here. Evil source frenzying up against rebellions. It could cut down to rookie. But in this case they're just going for push, they're not gonna go for a kill. There are uh, Gurs Broodling. Shanks did go Broodlords and Anabolic, level 11. Rump got Psy Blast, 990 damage. Or 1200, uh, 1300 damage against Zerg. And yes, thank you for the farm board. 6 5 right now. We have, uh, I suppose, a type 3300 farm for the 21s and 2700 farm for the Lions. One thing that's interesting, all of these um, levy, levy plays we've seen, double levy, so on and so forth, no corruptors. Am I missing something from the meta? Uh, we haven't seen corruptors since uh, any 9 I don't think. Yeah, it's just, they played sort of, a, they were sort of, you know, oh yeah, you gotta know how to play corruptors, and now, just don't bother, go boss levy. Yeah. I'd, I'd be curious to know why that is. Mm-hmm. Because there's nothing that actually changed with Corruptor play in balance. It's just... Well, hmm. Well, guys, post post in the stream chat what you think. Or post in the forums even better about why do, why have Corruptors gone away. We all know why BCs have gone away, but why have Corruptors gone away? They're still actually pretty good for farming and helping a levy get really fat and then also provide map control. Yeah, Nightstar is going to have to get more lasers. Rum at least has six. Shanks going back. Rebellion's pushing in now with. He has bombardment. Don't want me to mention that. Parasite is going to expire soon in a minute. For damn good. So the lines will lose vision on the Overlord shortly. Rookie now is defensive matrix. Eight cooldown. And Gur is now coming back with level 10 broods. Still doesn't match up to Shanks. Did Shanks get um, metabolic? Checking. 2.5. Uh, yes, he does. It's, if it's 2.5, he has the passive. If it's 3, Perfect. he does not. Guardians are basically the blind spot. I don't. I just don't really play Guardian. <laughs> but luckily there are players like Bozo Cat who can help me out with that. Apologies for all the tilts, that's my push to top key. No worries. I've got a mouse with a button on the side, but I find it's really funny because if I'm sitting at my computer talking to someone in real life, I end up pushing the push to talk button. <laughs> yep, I do that. You just get yeah, very I'll used to it. i have a conversation in the car and I'll be like, where's my push to talk button? <laughs> <laughs> I should turn up their volume because they're in the back seat. <laughs> Alright, Chrono Boosted Evil Source. Cleaning up the brood lords. The lions push back to their towers, not looking good at the moment. Let's take a look at the let's look at the farm board brought to you by Evil Source. I display my UI so Artemis can show my vision. 3760 farm for the twenty ones and three thousand farm for the lions. So though the lions We've got a kill attempt on rebellions in the top line. Yep. Kill attempt on rebellion. Storm. He's got his protective field. Evil source. The Leviathan's frenzied up, and a bombardment. Not able to catch him. Rookie was able to start transferring. So an unsuccessful kill attempt. And Shanks's broodlords are starting to work away in the tower. Damn good now also has broodlords. We have double broodlords um, on the field now for the lions. Evil Soulcer and Loco are looking quite beefy. Loco's a little low on the bile, but he also has, he's gone for acid spray. Rookie 
Raven Creek circling back now. It looks like 21 is pulling back. They're worried also about a warp trick because they've been at the ba they've been at the Lions' base for a little while. They may not be able to see them all. And he's, he sometimes is a caster. We don't we don't see them either, <laughs> especially those with the elite purple color because <laughs> it's very dark on the mini map. You can't really see them well. Can always set fan full colors. Yep. I was doing that for a while. Now I just want to see the fancy colors. One and two. Though most of these teams are actually yellow versus purple, for the most part. The Broodlords have actually dropped my frame rate down to 13 FPS because there's just so much happening on the map. Yeah, I'm noticing uh, a slight I drop too. Having similar problems in game. I'm seeing a slight drop too. I don't know if that's from me or from the game, but I can start closing stuff on my end. It still looks alright. Plague is actually super effective against the Broodlords. I noticed. I saw Rum. Uh, Plague one of the plague one group and they just died very very quickly. I just dropped my settings to medium. Okay. I'm up to 19 FPS. Nice. Night before tournament, I was freaking out because I was at 5 FPS, but then I realized I had a bunch of graphics drivers and Windows updates I needed to do, and as soon as I did that, my FPS jump jumped back up to 60 70. Nice. That's what you want. <laughs> yeah. So we have a potential warp trick going around by Evil Source. Warp Trick brought to you by Evil Source. But this time he doesn't have any farm to scout for him. Now let's see it when the lines notice he's there. Still no, and they're actually still sort of staying in the center. They, But they got to know it's coming because they can't see all the ships. Now the here's the warp in. Three ships in the warp in. The lions are unaware, staying in the middle in the danger zone. Four ships. And that was actually a good way to stagger it. The lions now know something's up. They uh -oh. could be going for Rebellions, who's away from his team, but looks like they're cutting it a bit more steep. There we go. And the, less th and the rest of the 21s are going to come in. Raven Creek's going to get his gats on him. Frenzy by Evil Source. That's a kill. Double Frenzy. There goes Rebellions. Frenzy by Loco. Defensive Matrix and Stasis on Rookie. Very nice. Very nice I strategy. Love the stasis. That's a beautiful detail. Yes, that was a and then, wonderful. And because of the stasis rookie is totally out of position and he'll die too. Yeah, that was a one. That was a really nice one-two punch right there, or maybe a bunch of punches followed by a uh, would it roundhouse or something. That was nice. It was a combo. That was a very nice combo. Kudos to Nightstar. Good stasis, or whoever told you to do it. Good job. Even if someone told you to do it, you still had to do it. But yes, that that. Uh, that definitely sets back the Lions f even further. Take a quick look at our scoreboard, folks. We are now at 6-3. The Lions held on at 6-5 six at six for a while, but then they lost their Raven and their Destro. We are now at 4,290 farm advantage to 2,000. Basically, this is going to be insurmountable if the, if the 21s keep playing as well as they are. Um, they keep playing as well as they are. Don't make any silly mistakes. They have two Leviathans. They'll have this game in the bag. And actually, here we go. A well-played and a GG from the Lions. Note, guys, they're in EU. So this is very late for them. So they want to get on to game three as soon as possible. And that's also well-mannered because they know that they can't win this game. So yeah, that's it for game two. Any thoughts, Bozo, while we watch these guys suicide and clean things up? It, it it all turned when they were able to pick off that ship. But in general, when you're playing one support versus two support, when you're on one support, you want to get a huge farm lead. And I, I felt the lines were still a little bit too conservative, and 21Z was much more aggressive than last game. As a result, they were able to hold the farm even until their supports were able to win the mid-game for them. And then once they won the mid-game, their supports just kept rolling and compounding and rolling and compounding. Yeah. Uh, the other thing to note is buy rapid regen. Yes, admin six. There was no reason admin six should have died there. Um, yeah, it just hurts. I mean, if you do, if you do emergencies, but more importantly, it will win you the side lane. Yes, I think. I think, I, and I think everyone watching the stream sort of agreed. All eighty viewers of you guys, come on, rapid regen. But there were a couple lessons. I loved that stasis. That was really nice. It that was a was really a good really warp trip. It was a it was a sexy warp trip followed by just a really strong, aggressive, manly push, followed by a very sexy stasis, and then followed by another manly push, whatever you want to take that. But it was really good. 
that was uh, that was pretty exciting. I was thinking EU I'm versus sure EU. <laughs> yeah, I'll just leave it. I'll leave it to you boys. You know, just yeah, you're all boys. Just go do your own thing, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, guys, so this is Artemis and Bozo Cat. We were casting the Team Twenty One Zero, as I was calling them, the Twenty Ones versus the Lions for the semifinal match of the World Star Battle Two tournament. We will catch you for Game Three. And it pr after looking at these two matches, I'm very excited for the next one. GG! GG! GG!